I'm sure you know of Uniqlo, a Japanese clothing brand. They are one of the global leaders in Ito. In 2016, Uniqlo decided to give a major overhaul to their mobile e-commerce application. Now, they started from cart and checkout and gave it very strict rules. The application needed to uh, download the renderer in under three seconds on 3G. There are a lot of challenges that come with that goal. For example, just for the cart, it requires about 14 API endpoints, depending on the size of the cart, could be more, just to load that content. So, so what happens with 14 API endpoints and the data that comes back? Obviously, we can, you know, if we render with every piece of data that comes in, we would get a very jarring effect. We don't want that. So uh, this was 2016. Um, nothing like suspense or concurrency mode existed at the time. So the solution was to use Redux and action creators to kind of bundle uh, those 14 API calls in a few chunks, two or three chunks, so that the application or that view renders and re-renders two or three times only. Way better than 14. The problem with this approach is that it required a fairly large infrastructure. You know, it's a centralized state management system. But React is changing that with the introduction of concurrency mode and earlier suspense. Okay, so suspense works with promises. You may have heard of it, you may have used it too with React Lazy. If you haven't, I strongly encourage you to take a look at my video on loading React apps in under three seconds. So suspense is a very simple mechanism, to explain at least, um, which basically pauses rendering of the subtree until promises have been resolved. Now, how do we get to those promises? Using React Lazy, we return promises um, inside the Lazy function. With concurrent mode, it's a bit different. Let's take a look at this example, where I'm trying to show the list of all NBA players that play in season 2019-2020. It's a very slow request, and I want to show the user that something is going on, that some data is loading, and when the data loads, I'm gonna show all that um, in a table. This is a great task for suspense because the fallback uh, parameter can be used to show which data, which component is going to be shown while the data is loading or until the promise has been resolved. The player component fetches players and then returns the view I want to show. As you can see, fetch players calls get players, which is a simple fetch API. The key to React concurrency is not in JSX. It's in the wrapper. So this wrapper basically enriches the fetch with a very simple idea. Here's how JavaScript reads this. Right when the fetch promise is called, the wrapper sets status to pending. It creates its own then callback that changes status to success or failure, depending on what we got. By returning a function, we let the status flag live in memory. Each time we execute the function, it checks if status flag has changed. Here's the part that React's algorithm recognizes. Throw suspender. Suspender is the original promise. React's engine will recognize it and it pass its own then handler. That's how React knows that the promise has been resolved and it's time to re-render the subtree. The trick is, that the promise was never returned. It was thrown in that wrapper. React had to implement some kind of an error handler mechanism to be able to capture the thrown reference to the promise. You can go ahead and use this example. You can build on it and, and learn more about concurrency. The link to the source code is in the description below. I want to share one disclaimer before I go. If you use concurrency mode, for performance optimization. Now, this is good, but you can do more. Make sure that your uh, code is properly code split and components are lazy loaded. This is a lot easier and it will give you a lot more return for the time invested. Okay, your turn now. Go ahead and try this. Um, please come back and let us know how it went if you liked it. You know, one thing that I'm not so sure about is if people will want to invest 
in creating their own wrappers. Um, I mean, it's usually good to have some kind of um, API client, some kind of interface that is used to communicate to API calls nonetheless. But I really want to know how you feel about this whole idea. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, use the comments below and I'll personally get back to you as soon as possible. If this video was useful to you, please like it and share with your network. We do plan on releasing a lot more videos on content like this. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified when new videos are out.